Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will be working on making baby bunnies. Now, before we get into this video, um, a lot of you guys have been asking whether or not I sell my work, and I do sell my work. Um, usually I leave links in the description below, but if any of you guys want to check out my shop or stuff, I have a bunch of stuff up there right now. Um, so grab them while you can, but yes, I do pretty much always sell my work. So if you see a YouTube video, there's a chance that that exact creature is probably in my shop. But yeah, let's continue on with the video. Um, the first thing you see me doing is sculpting, but I'm not using the same clay I normally typically use. This clay is called monster clay, and it's only really good for when you want to make um, molds or copies of something. So I want to make a bunch of bunnies. So I'm using this monster clay to make... Um, for the specific reason of making a silicone mold and resin casts, which pretty much just means that I'm going to be making a bunch of copies of this. Um, this clay is pretty much not really good for anything else unless, I guess, maybe you want to use it for maybe practicing, but then um, you can never do anything else with it. So the type of clay I recommend for you guys if you want to make your own art dolls is polymer clay. So Super Sculpey, Fimo, um, Sculpey 3, uh, like any type of polymer clay um, would work perfect for that because that kind of stuff can just bake in the oven and it turns rock solid and it's pretty durable. Um, it's a little more forgiving. So uh, I really recommend that type of clay. If you're going to be more advanced uh, and want to use uh, this type of clay to make your own molds then I definitely recommend this type of clay for that kind of thing. Um, you heat it up and um, can uh, mold it until it starts to cool and when it starts to cool that's when you can start adding details but it could always be like reheated if you need to shape something else. So it's a really good clay for that but not a really good clay for much anything else but the process of me sculpting is the same I'll start out with a uh, rough head shape in this case it was just a big ball because I wanted a big bulbous head and I added a little a little ball to the center for a little snout and um, the eyes you see me using are just clear glass cabochons that I bought from Etsy I believe um, I'm not painting them obviously because I'm just using this for a, a silicone mold but um, you can buy the cabochons for your sculptures and paint them you can even buy like pre-made cabochons um, to use as glass eyes I know there's a lot of sellers on Etsy that offer like a really good selection so um, if any of you guys are always interested in using glass eyes that's definitely a place I recommend looking but um, I don't typically I, I'm trying to get better at using sculpting tools, but I don't use them too frequently, but they do help a lot, I will admit. But I also want to say, don't think that you need sculpting tools just to sculpt, because half the time, I just get by with using a needle in my hands. But um, I will admit that the sculpting tools make it a lot easier on me and make it um, a lot easier to get into those little nooks and crannies and whatnot. And so... Uh, I'm pretty sure you can find, I wouldn't recommend like Hobby Lobby or something for this kind of thing because they were like $15 and that's a bit ridiculous if I'm going to be honest. Um, so anywhere else like online or, or maybe a cheaper craft store you can find, you can probably get them for much, much cheaper. But, you know, I recommend them, you know, they're pretty good, but just don't think that you need them to get started, you know. For this bunny, I wanted a pretty, uh, I was going for like a sort of realistic, but sort of like cheapified, cutesy type deal. And I think I found a good middle ground. And I, th I think it turned out really cute and, you know, still had some realism kind of to it. Um, now, even though this is a very stylized version of a bunny and it's not um, totally realistic, Still references. Guys, I'm still going to keep telling you references, references, references. Um, I still had pictures of baby bunnies from all different angles just so I can get a general idea of where to start and then add style um, throughout. But if you guys are trying to make something realistic, if you guys are beginners, if you guys are advanced, if you've been doing it your entire life, I don't care. 
you always 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 need references um any type of creature you're trying to make any type of human you're trying to make any type of object you're trying to make you always want a bunch of different pictures of the thing you're going for in multiple different angles and, and multiple different views just so you can really get an idea of the shape you need to make and where you should add clay more here or where you should add clay more there and and things like that and it also helps like say you're starting to get really frustrated with your sculpture and you're just like well what the hell this is like totally not turning out anywhere that i wanted it to be um it's really good to take a break and I know that just sounds like, oh, really a break? Oh, okay, yeah, that's really gonna help me. But it does. I noticed that like, if I get really frustrated with the sculpture, if I just take a break for a minute, if I go play like a video game or something and I always go walk my dog or play fetch with him or just go get a snack or something, just relax for a minute. And then when you come back, you immediately see what was wrong. It's because you're staring at it for so long and you're focusing on it that you can't look past it and see like, the big picture and what um, the overall issue might be. So when you take a break, you look at it with fresh eyes, so to speak. And so it, it can really help if you're like in a stuff spot, in a stuff spot, in a rough, <laughs> rough spot. And um, it just, it, it really helps. So, you know, if you guys are ever getting frustrated or anything like that, just make sure you're taking your breaks. So, you know, this type of thing, it takes time and it's meant to be fun. It's not meant to be frustrating or, or annoying and stuff so just take it nice and slow and enjoy yourself so normally i don't record my armature making just because it's a really difficult thing to try to record um usually i just find an image of a skeleton of the animal i'm going for and then trace it that way but in this case since i wanted a very stylized version and i wanted uh, multiple copies i wanted them all to be the same size i sketched out what I wanted my piece to look like and how big I wanted it and then you can see I marked where the armature is going to go in black and then I'm just tracing that and that's another um, friendly option for you guys where you can just um, draw out what you're going for and then make the armature that way. So once the armature is all finished, it's time to build up the body. Now I use quilt batting and it comes in these long sheets that I'll cut into strips and then just wrap around the body over and over and over until the body's built up to how I want. Now a thing to keep in mind is that you want to build up the body just a little bit less than how thick you actually want the body to be because your fur or whatever fabric you're going to be using is going to usually add a bit of girth to it. And so you wanna make sure you're adding just underneath the amount that you need so that when you add the fur and you trim it and do all the other stuff that it's going to be the exact size that you wanted it to be so that's just something to be mindful of once that's done it's time to make the pattern and cut out the fabric and i use pattern very loosely as we all know, I say every single time that it's not really a pattern that I make. I kind of call it the go for it method where basically you just cut a piece of fabric the entire length of the doll and make sure it's wide enough. Um, and then I'll cut slits where the legs will slide through, slide the legs through, um, trim the fur down so it wraps around the body nice and tightly and then sew straight down the middle. It doesn't make much sense when I'm explaining it out loud, but accompanied with the video, I hope it kind of makes a little bit more sense and it's easier to see. Um, I'm not good at pattern making, so this is just the way I do it. Um, I do the legs the exact same way where I'll cut a length of fur the or fabric the entire a length of the leg and then I'll start from the feet first and sew up towards the body and then to join the two fabrics together I will use a ladder stitch.
Once the sewing is done, it's time to trim up the body. I use a pet shaver from the first round of trimming. Um, it's so much quicker than I could ever do with scissors. It's um, a lot smoother and more even than I can ever do with scissors. So I really recommend a pet shaver. It comes in a bunch of different guards, which just means that it'll trim the fur in different lengths. And so that's really convenient. But even after I go over the entire body with my trimmer, I'll still go back in with some scissors and just detail trim everything. It's usually around the legs or anything that the pet shaver couldn't get to because it's kind of bulky. So um, yeah, I really, I really recommend a pet shaver. It's, it, it saves so much time, you guys. Once the trimming is all done, it's time to paint. I did fur this face. If you'd like to see how I fur my faces, it is available on my Patreon. I'll just do a little shameless plug right now. Um, but after I furred the face, it's time to paint. And I use acrylic paints. Any type of acrylic paints you want is fine. You don't need a very specific brand or anything. Uh, I know a lot of people use folk art. I used to too. I use Liquitex Basics usually. That's what I'm working on right now. Um, but I didn't have to do too much painting. It was just the eyes, a little bit of the nose. I did paint cute little hearts on his little toesies and it was look, looking very cute and his inner ears and things like that. But um, yeah, I mean, after that it was pretty much done. It was just a little painting here and there. I added some gloss varnish to the eyes to make them sparkle and stuff. And so it looked a little bit more lifelike. And then, yeah, it was done. Now, unfortunately, the bunny sold a lot faster than I thought it would, so I didn't have time to get like a video montage of it being done, but I did get a lot of photos, and so I'll post those here. And I'll also show you guys um, like the casted bunnies that I made. I made like a rainbow versions of them, so I, I made one in every single color. So I'll show you guys photos of that as well, but I just wanted to thank you guys 
for sticking around and watching this video and I know my upload schedule is really sporadic um, I've had a lot of like personal family things come up I had a death in the family so I was dealing with that so I'm trying to get back in the saddle and get back to making YouTube videos for you guys because I do miss it it's kind of addicting so look forward to that and just uh, yeah if you guys want to check out any of my older social media I'll have all the links down below for you guys and I'll see you guys next time bye Oh